टुडे प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी अशर्ड चीताज विच हैव बीन इंपोर्टेड फ्रॉम नमीबिया इन द कोनो नेशनल पार्क इन मध्य प्रदेश मिस्टर सांवल हाउ डू यू थिंक दिस इज अ ग्रेट स्टेप फॉर कंजर्वेशन नॉट ओनली ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ बट आल्सो ऑफ फ्लोरा एंड फोना इन द कंट्री यू सी डू मस्ट रिमेंबर दैट फॉर यू हंड्रेड इयर्स अगो मोस्ट ऑफ द नॉर्थ इंडियन और मोस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री वाज फॉरेस्टेड including north india what area we call between the ganges and the jamuna river that is the north indian plain there are records of uh, akbar capturing elephants in the kuno area and the last lion was shot there some 150 years ago we should also remember that the ashoka lion pillar itself symbolizes and establishes that the lions were prevalent in this part of the subcontinent that where his empire was located or his headquarters or his capital city was located gradually with development and change in the land use the animal population has shifted or has become extinct prime minister narendra modi's physical presence in the release of the cheetah has great significance because so far we have been thinking of wildlife conservation in terms of species we have project tiger we have project elephant we have crocodile in the kachambal valley and we have declared national parks but the direct involvement of the prime minister in an activity of this kind to reintroduce the cheetah in india i think is symbolic for a number of reasons firstly it shows highest political commitment towards conservation it also establishes that species that have become extinct we need to do a full effort to reintroduce them and by implication the species that are endangered like the tiger the lion and the elephant rhinoceros need to be given protection so the signal would also be for his department and remember that forestry conservation is a concurrent subject both for the national and the state level now we to also see that the efforts that have been made in the past are being given a new direction now at the time of the maharajas british colonial rulers the forest department was primarily involved in commercial activity that is timber to be sold for railway sleepers or other activities and hunting of animals gradually that has changed and the foresters became more involved with conservation of trees animals and linked with the with the local population the idea of the prime minister to introduce a new species in central india with linkages with tourism i think is also very significant we have had tourism in old national parks but that was a continuing activity here we have taken a national park the kuno national park of some 750 square kilometers earlier villages had been rehabilitated to provide for the asiatic lion and for reintroduction of the asiatic lion here and to preserve the wildlife flora and fauna but the area had been declared a protected area but the next step had not been taken of linking it up to livelihoods of the local population of control tourism of people living outside but coming and going within the forest area because that is considered to be the best form of protection you know kono has been significant in many ways it was to be developed as a park where the loins of gear could have been come but if we speak of the larger issue of conservation in india since prime minister narendra modi has come to power in uh, 2014 the area under the protected areas have increased significantly and the number of tiger reserves have increased to 52 so if you see the animals under protection all sort of animals tigers leopards uh, whose population has also increased significantly both tigers and leopards and other wildlife also we see that in the protected areas their population has increased so what sort of a dimensional change do you see that in the last 8 years the government of india has done for better conservation of uh, the wildlife and forest you see you have raised a very important point traditionally we rely on statistics and the statistics are important but the big change has been in terms of quality of protection it is not just a physical counting of areas of number of animals but the qualitative change that has taken place and i think kuno signifies that of linking the various activities that either impact negatively or positively and taking a holistic view of the whole of uh, conservation i think is new i'm not saying that this was not happening earlier but it was not happening in the manner that in which it is happening now 
and the fact that it is being monitored, the fact that uh, there is the highest level political commitment, and the fact that we are linking it up more actively with tourism, controlled tourism, I think is important because without that, it has been found that it is difficult to preserve these kind of habitats or these species. That is the experience of Africa. That is our own experience in places like the Corporate National Park. That controlled tourism activity is the best form of protection. And I think expanding that to all the national parks in a wider form, I think, is a major qualitative change and contribution of Prime Minister. In India, we have seen that the forest cover has also increased by about 16,000 square kilometers in the past few years as per the Forest Survey of India report. This is a significant increase in the forest cover despite government giving approvals projects in the forest areas, which shows that uh, the quality of the forest is increasing and the, uh, the cover is also increasing. And also in urban areas, if we see the tree cover, it has also risen significantly. So on this aspect of the forest cover and the quality, how do you think that this paradigm change has happened? You see, the big paradigm change is that we are now using satellite imagery on a more regular basis than in the past. We have also extended technology in the GIS format and other technologies to get more precise and accurate monitoring. The third thing is that we have extended this concept to urban areas. Earlier, the idea was that there is a vast open tract where very few people live away from cities, and that has would be declared as a forest reserve or conservation area or national park. Now, this big paradigm shift has been that it is not just protecting the traditional areas which were declared as forest and where we had the forest department looking after these basically trees and animals, but that we should change the definition of forest itself and start looking at concentrations of trees. Because the idea is not a territorial concept of looking after a particular area demarcated on the ground, but we must have vegetation in a, in a more organized manner. And I think that is a major shift because then the urban or municipal areas are also becoming conscious of tree cover. And as urbanization grows, this is going to be a more increasing trend of rural population shifting to cities. So it was time that the cities themselves started becoming conscious of conservation of trees, of water, and wildlife and habitat. And I think this paradigm shift owes a lot to Prime Minister Modi because ultimately it is not a technical but a political and a societal issue. And unless the direction comes from the top, these kind of fundamental transformation changes do not take place. And we can see them happening in our country now with the urban areas becoming more or less on the forefront of forest conservation because new areas are being mapped and people are becoming conscious of this. Take the area around Delhi. Large areas of water bodies, which were lying neglected around the villages, have now been declared as wildlife areas for uh, migratory birds. Now, this is new. Earlier, these areas were being encroached upon. As one can see in Bangalore, all the lakes were has been largely encroached upon for urban construction. Now, with this new shift, particularly in northern India and other areas, that we must look after these water bodies and natural habitats in the same manner as we look after private property. It is not just the introduction of the animal, but their survival in the natural habitat and they're looking after. Now, all this becomes part of a self-sustaining network of activities, which has a very wider impact than just one event. We should not see this as just one event. It is more of a process, a political signal, and something that has made a fundamental change in not only that local area, but for a wider area in the country and wider policy. Thanks a lot, Mr. Samwal, to be with us. Thank you.